everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and welcome to a vlog about my second project on the Rigid Heddle Loom. For my first project, I made a bunch of mug rugs just to get a feel for what the process of warping is like. And now, I want to try to make a scarf, I think. I don't know if I have enough yarn. So this yarn is Knitology from Knit Crate in the color Dashboard. And it is a bouncy worsted and 100% superwash merino wool, 180 yards per 100 grams. So 200 grams of yarn uh, may not be enough for a scarf, but I don't know if weaving takes up more or less yardage than knitting to make something similar. I think maybe less, but I don't know. <laughs> I'm thinking that the scarf could be used by one of my kids anyway, and really, I just want to try weaving something. And this is a fun colorway, uh, not something that I have a plan for, so if I mess up horribly, I won't be disappointed. And I figure, actually, worst case scenario, I can make like little buddy sleeping bags for my kids out of the fabric. We'll, we'll use it for something, if it will not fit a human. <laughs> but now, I just need to go kick the yarn up. I'm warping for the scarf, and the goal is for the warp to be about three yards long. So here it's coming down to one post, back, and then back again. Uh, so that should be three yards, and I'm starting winding the next section just over on some other posts. But <laughs> I think I probably miscalculated something because uh, this is how much yarn I have of this first ball left, and that's where I am on the apron rod. So I'm not going to be centered, <laughs> which, you know, is something that uh, I could redo or maybe I'll use some remnant something to just add some warp to the other side to just sort of even it out, maybe, <laughs> uh, because I don't know how much yardage I'm going to need for weft and I'm a little nervous that I'll run out. But let me keep warping and finish up this last skein. So I undid the warp going through a mega, 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 mega tangled mess. Don't want to talk about it. Uh, and I'm going to give this another shot, but I'm going to start more towards the center. Uh, again, I'm going to try to use most of this, but instead of going for three yards, I think I'm going to go for more two and a half. So that way I can make it a bit wider. Uh, I read somewhere online that with uh, the weft, you might use two-thirds the yardage as the warp. So I think if I use 100 grams for warp, then that should be good. But yeah, I think I'm going to try to uh, start like here. Uh, so that way it can be more centered. Maybe I didn't start over far enough, but I don't care. But the warp is shorter this time. Because I'm going back to a peg, front, so like two and a half yards. I think this is better much better not perfectly centered but more centered and the width um is better definitely better and yeah now i have to what transfer half of these strands into the next door slots uh yeah i guess i have to cut it first and then do that i did the whole thing backwards and i thought i was looking at the pictures and yeah this is where the fabric should go. This is where they should go. But the good news is I think I can just wind all the warp onto here and it should be good. So why don't we try that? Oh God. Oh man. Okay, this isn't so bad. I mean, I swear I was looking at like where the heddle was placed and looking back and forth at things the whole time and I still did it backwards. So um, some of these are a bit loose, but I can tie them off onto this apron. The ones in the middle are fine, but I can give some more attention to our edges. So I'm going to go and do that now. I retied it. I've lost some length, but you know what? That is okay. <laughs> now let's wind it over here. I don't know what I want to do about fringe, but I've got, I think, a good length. 
a really good length for fringe this time. I'm not going to try hem stitching, but I overlapped some of these tongue depressor things I used last time. So we'll see. But I need to wind some of this onto my shuttle now. I may be pulling these edges too tight, but I am already really, really excited with the way this variegated yarn is going to give us like some plaid-esque uh, striping in here. I mean, it did pool. We do have like these big sections of yellow uh, coming up, so that is some pooling, but hopefully it's not going to bother me. We'll see how that that goes but for now I'm really into what's happening I just noticed the pooling <laughs> it's not perfect I'm definitely going a bit too tight uh you can see that the width is not going to be even you can see this is coming in a bit here but I'm trying to like loosen it back up it's okay if it's uneven it's my first scarf attempt <laughs> oh no I missed a uh a lot. I'm going to go back and fix it. I'm sure there will be mistakes over the course of this, but this one is so close. So let's just go back and fix it. The weaving is going well. I don't mind the pooling. The pooling, I think just looks really cool. Uh, I have, I feel like every once in a while I notice a mistake where I have like a doubled up thread or something. I'm sure there's some on the other side, but if it's within the last couple of rows, I just quickly go back and fix it. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't think any of them are like big enough that I would like cut, uh, try to cut the fabric after the fact to fix it. But so far, so good. Tension wise, and this is probably because I had to like rewind it and the paper is at an angle on the back beam. Uh, it's a little bit tight on the edge, but I think the edges being a little tight is better than them being a little floppy. I think that I just started weaving this last night and I'm already approaching the end. This has gone super, super fast. I've made lots of mistakes along the way. Uh, I've <laughs> certainly made mistakes. I'm weaving it too tight. I've had tension issues. I, I mean, I even warped it backwards to begin with, but I'm really, really happy that I did this. I feel like this is a reason why I recommend hats to new knitters because the joy of being able to finish a project is something that is such a big deal. And there's really not that much warp left. So yeah, I'm almost done. At one point, like one of these warp threads had like a lot of tension more than the rest. And I sort of fixed that by using some of these uh, tongue depressors and inserting them in and that actually like was able to change the tension. So I don't know if there's a proper term for that, but I was able to rig something up that helped. Again, I think I was hoping that this would have been wider, but because I only had 200 grams of this yarn, I really didn't want to risk like not having enough length to it. So I'd rather it be more narrow. And now I know more for the next time I weave something because yeah, I know a little bit more. I can look at the yardage of this yarn. Yeah, it's a worsted weight yarn, but because there's only 180 yards and 100 grams, I think that if I used like wool of the Andes or something that had 220 yards per 100 grams, I would have been able to make something you know, a bit wider just because of having that much more yardage. So I will continue to explore. Obviously, I will continue to explore. But it was really fun to go through my stash and pick a yarn that I've saved and held on to for a while. And I think next I might want to dye some yarn specifically for a weaving project or at least go through my collection of yarn that I've dyed and kept for myself and maybe use some of that uh, and try to use some of my hand dyed yarn because I'm really enjoying the way that the colors from the variegated warp and weft are playing off of one another and any pulling that's happening isn't bothering me. We'll see how I feel when I look at the finished scarf, but this is so novel for a knitter and... I mean, I also crochet, but I'm primarily a knitter. And so 
It's just really, really fun. I also want to thank you all for the feedback on my first weaving vlog. I just published that uh, yesterday when I was starting this, and it was really fun to hear both advice, that was super helpful, advice and tips from all of you, but also feedback from those of you who have had rigid heddle looms that maybe you haven't started trying yet. And I highly recommend, even if you're using some scrap remnant yarn, like I did last time, or going through your stash and picking something, just go for it. It can be so nerve-wracking to start a project that you might not like or might not see yourself using the finished garment or anything that you make. But this has gone so fast that it's worth it to take that time to experiment. And so whether you want to try to do something small, like a mug rug or some kind of like placemat for a table or something, just to try it, I think is worth it uh, to, because then, I don't know, I guess now I have a better feel of what I might be able to do more going forward. And this is still just plain weave. Like I don't have any plans to do like pickup stacks and things more complicated, but who knows? You never know where you're gonna go when you start a new craft. Anyway, this may end up just being a very short scarf and who knows if it'll shrink more widthwise when I wet finish it. But I'm happy and proud, even knowing that there's gonna be mistakes that I find through here. I've learned a lot just by trying. And so that I think is really important. I'm not sure if I even showed any actual weaving on this vlog, but I can't go any further really. Like if I have this in up or down, I can't really get the shuttle through anymore. So I think we're done. And it's nighttime. I think I'm gonna wait until tomorrow to take this off the loom but look at all this fabric we have I just I figured we'll wait we'll wait oh and when I was switching yarn you can see like one little end poking up I just kind of overlapped it in the weave and so we'll see how that does I figured it was worth testing that here so no knots um but anyway in the morning let's take a look at the scarf yay okay it is the next morning and I'm not sure how long for the tail to clip, but let's open this up. <laughs> uh, I'm always awkward with, there we go. Okay. No idea how far back. reasonable scarf length. Let's see how long I think this is. Maybe it's not that long. I would say, wow, this is really pretty actually. I don't have a yardstick, but measured or folded in half, it is about like 33 inches long. And I definitely in here feel some of the area where the tension on one of these warp threads was a little tight. Uh, I don't know if you can tell that there might be some puckering. I still need to wet finish this, of course. And it's possible that I still went a little tight with the beading. Like, off the loom, I don't see a lot of space in here. Which maybe ne means I needed a different, like, heddle. I could have had one that was a little bit more spread out. So then I could have had more space. But it's still... Like, feels like a nice scarf. It feels nice and it looks nice. Uh, it might be a tad short, but let me cut it off. And really, instead of like cutting, I mean untying both sides. I think I counted. I think I can do fringe in groups of four. And unlike last time, I certainly have plenty of space to work with. But let me think. So my warp was... The length of the loom plus about two and a half yards. And so this is telling me more about the amount of, I guess, waste from that. But of course, I made a mistake. So I definitely lost. <laughs> I think that I could have made the scarf a little over two yards long with the length of warp if I hadn't had to uh, cut and retie and therefore lost 
like inches of space uh, from that error on my part. I do still have some yarn left, but not a ton. So that's one side. Now I'm working on the other that I had tied more properly. So, I mean, it's certainly not perfect. I know I'm going to find tons of mistakes, especially once I look at the wrong side of the fabric. Because, like, I could see if I made a mistake on the right side, and if it was close enough, then I would go back and fix it. But with the wrong side, like, at one point, I felt like a really big float from a strand that I had missed. So... Uh, I would say that I will find a number of errors on here. Okay, remember how I said there's an area where there was tension that was a little tight? The scarf curves. I'm not sure how obvious it is, but this is it laid flat. <laughs> so this area that's tighter definitely introduces a curve into it, which really isn't a problem for a scarf. Uh, but visually and I can't show too much all at once the pooling seems to shift throughout it in a nice way uh, and I feel like I see both the warp and the weft which I'm really happy really really happy about I'm now looking okay so here are some mistakes on the right side I know there are others for sure. Uh, oh, there's there's a mistake. Uh, that's a loose end, but let me flip it over. Starting at the last bit, I, okay, I see one little float there, but I think I definitely got, I think I definitely got better as I went on. Here are a couple, and I think I saw couple more towards the beginning like here at the edge right there so I think another one just right here they are so small and subtle for the most part I mean this might be the biggest one where clearly I just like missed a bunch of strands but you almost don't notice them unless you're looking for them and so for that I am happy I need to tie the fringe but I mean, it's a really good length. It goes down really far. And so I feel like, I mean, I don't want to do it yet, but it's a tiny bit short, but as an adult, I should be able to like tie it and knot it around my neck. And it'll also be a really good size for the kids. So uh, not as bad as I thought. I am knotting up the fringe now, uh, trying to go every four strands and just doing it super loosely because I know I can tighten it later. Oh, this is so much easier than last time. Uh, but yeah, I think that like maybe the fabric is a bit dense, which makes me happy. It means that I don't know. What is this like an eight? Does it say on here somewhere? Is that the brand? Yeah. So this is an eight dent uh, heddle. So maybe like I need something where they're spaced a little more for a worsted weight yarn. Uh, so that way I can be a little bit looser. Like I think that I managed to have a balanced, I don't know if this is the right word, set. When I look at the, the weaving and I look at my scarf with the exception of, I'm seeing a couple more mistakes, but with the exception of my mistakes here, uh, the warp and weft, are very very balanced uh, and so therefore I mean I see them both which is what I wanted if I had left more space between the weft rows that wouldn't have given me the uh, balanced look I was wanting that would have I don't know made it more I don't know if that would have made it more weft, weft facing uh, I, I'm not sure but I mean my the, the stitches look as square as I think I could have done it. And that's what I wanted. That's what I wanted. So I don't know what 
uh, the best strategy would be for next time besides having just more space in between all of the warps. And so uh, I guess that's a reason why it can be worth swatching things in advance. But I think that the more I play with this, the more I can learn. But I definitely feel like this is going to be a really nice dense fabric. But there's absolutely space here uh, for me to have more space, I guess. There's space... Oop, was that five strands? This is what I get for nodding while chatting. There's space here for me to have had a wider and maybe even a little longer scarf had I... I messed up with my knot. Uh, had I used like a different size heddle. Um, and so that is something I guess that I need to think more about going forward. Now I do have a thinner one. What I got, I forget if it was like 14 or 12, uh, because I want to be able to eventually use fingering weight, which I am excited about. And I think, yeah, I'm excited, but also nervous about trying to go thinner. So I, I probably will stick with, maybe I'll try DK with this eight. Is that too thin? Am I making a mistake? I don't know, let me know in the comments. There's one side all roughly knotted. Now I'll do the other side. Fringe knotted, I need to wet finish, but yeah, I made a scarf. And I think this is probably the fastest scarf I ever made. It's cute, short, but cute. And it should still be pretty warm. I mean, goodness, this could even be like a snowman scarf we use. But I am gonna go and soak it. Let's go wet finish it. Okay, hot water with a little bit of dish soap. Let's add the scarf in. I wonder, whoop, <laughs> let's move the camera, how much things will relax um, and how much some of the tension in here may relax and shift. I'm sort of leaving the fringe out of the water because I see no reason. Oh my gosh, it's bleeding. It's bleeding. This is not yarn that I dyed. This was a knit crate yarn. So this goes to show that even like even like mills and stuff dying, there can be a uh, yarn that bleeds. I mean, this isn't a lot of bleeding, and so uh, I don't even know if you can. T I don't think you can tell with the white balance right now. I'll move the camera in a moment, but. I'm not going to bother adding vinegar or anything to this since if if I was using this yarn with a white yarn and I wanted to make sure the white yarn did not take up any um, any of this little bit of color, then I would have removed the scarf right away and used like a color catch and some vinegar in here. But it goes to show that non-indie yarns can bleed. I've seen this with commercial yarns in the past. And... I mean, I am using hot water here to set this. And who knows? I didn't measure the width before. I mean, it's not particularly stretchy. It is woven. But hopefully, this will just allow everything to relax and maybe will increase the drape of it. So I am moving this a bit, uh, a bit here and squeezing it a bit just to give a little bit of some agitation, but I don't want to do too, too much. So anyway, I'm going to let this soak for, I don't know, 20 minutes or so. And then I'm going to put it through. I'm tempted to just put it through my spin dryer, but I might um, tap out a lot of the water in my, in a towel and then hang it to dry. So I'll come back once it is dry. Here is a better view of the watercolor. I'm gonna rinse out the soap. And then I decided to go with a towel to gently pat out most of the water before hanging it to dry. It's not necessarily the warmest scarf because it is thin and not super long, but it is really cute. It's really, really cute and definitely has the potential to be warm. I would just need to probably have more yarn, make it a little bit thicker and a little bit longer, and then I could get it so it would feel warm. But I think that a worn differently than how I have it now, it would definitely provide warmth in the winter. Like it, there's no question, it's super wash merino. It is a warm fabric, but actually it doesn't feel too warm, which is nice, because it's not that cold yet. But 
I think that if I wanted something to really be like a super warm winter scarf, I would need it to be longer and wider. Uh, but that would just involve me making uh, some fewer mistakes with the warp and honestly making sure I have enough yardage for something. So maybe this yarn just isn't quite enough yardage for a scarf and just like 200 grams maybe isn't enough for a scarf unless it's a lacy one. If you're knitting, maybe the same is true with weaving, but I don't know and I have more to learn. I am currently filming introductions and conclusions for Hanukkah, but since I had the lights and camera set up, I wanted to show off the drape of the scarf after wet finishing. It came off of the loom a little bit stiff, but now, oh, I mean, it really does just feel like fabric. I mean, it is soft and full of drape, and if I, you know, put it around my neck, it lays really, really beautifully. Maybe not with my Hanukkah jammies, but it is really, really beautiful. Anyway, <laughs> clearly I still have a fringe to trim and tighten, and I will give you a look, um, a closer look of this, but I figured since I was here, not that this is that much of a wide shot, but I could try. <laughs> okay. There we go. It's not all in frame, but maybe this is the best that I can do. Here is a closer look at the fabric after wet finishing. It really does make a difference to wet the yarn and let it sort of relax into the weave because then things that maybe were a little taut are more relaxed and it may have straightened out. I'm not really sure, but uh, for all I was worried about it being too dense and there is a chance I could have woven things a little bit looser. Uh, the fabric feels like a fabric. It doesn't feel like a mesh and it just came together so well, even with all my mistakes. I trimmed the fringe down. It's nowhere near perfect, but it doesn't need to be because I can always trim it more in the future. What I'm very impressed with is how bouncy the yarn is and I mean, it's staying very nicely. It's really a nice yarn for the fringe. And so I'm very, very happy with that. It definitely did shrink some with wet finishing. I haven't measured it or anything, but Ryder has claimed it as his own. He's also tried to claim a bunch of my other scarves, but he's claimed this one. So I'm gonna let him have it because I don't think he has a scarf of his own. And I'm already very excited to start my next weaving project. Finally finishing this vlog probably will give me the excuse I needed to get started. Here are a few Knit Crate yarns I pulled from my stash that I might use next. I've got a cotton that's variegated. He, uh, it's sort of like a self-striping gradient type thing. Like the transitions are not slow between them, but I think it is just one big color section of each repeat. So that would be really fun to weave with. And then there's this subtle tonal but decay weight uh, yarn. This is a non-superwash alpaca merino blend and there are 236 yards per 100 grams. So I have a feeling it's a bit more grippy. I don't know if that'll make it harder to weave with, but I think that it would be really, really beautiful and maybe I can make something slightly bigger. So I'm leaning towards starting with this one next. I don't know for sure if I am going to vlog every step of every project that I do here on out. If I start doing a lot of weaving, I might do like a roundup every once in a while of the various projects. I think for the next one, I'll probably still film it just in case, but I might decide not to share all of it because I don't want this to be repetitive. But I do keep making mistakes. And so I think that sharing that is helpful and hopefully relatable if you're starting out and are feeling frustrated that things aren't perfect right away. I had so much fun with this and I didn't feel, okay, wait, I felt frustrated when I warped it wrong and I had to undo it and it was really tangled. I was very frustrated, very, very frustrated there. But for the actual weaving process, it wasn't so bad. And really the warping and weaving took two days. So it's fast enough that I feel okay trying again, even if I'm gonna mess things up. I know I said earlier I really wanted to play with some hand dyed yarn. I also really want to play with mixing different colors for warp and weft, play with doing some kind of plaids and things like that. But I just want to practice again with straight weave and see how I like a slightly thinner yarn 
with this eight dent heddle because who knows, maybe I just need to go order a few more heddles so I have a little more option there. Please let me know what you thought of this vlog. If you have any more tips, I would love to hear them. And let me know if you want to hear more about this going forward. I do want to do more vlogs of projects in general. I do have a pattern and yarn that I bought myself for Mother's Day. The yarn is from Lola Bean Yarn Co. And the pattern is Trace Hilados by Fatima Hines. And this is a project I'm really excited about because there's three different DK weight yarn bases in it with different twist and fiber content all worked together, which I'm really excited by this whole concept and I think it'll be a lot of fun. And so my plan is to get set up for my next weaving project and for the shawl in the next couple of days. Now that Hanukkah is over, my plan is to get started on those. So those vlogs may not come out until 2022, but that is what is on my plan. And I will link to the pattern I just mentioned in the video description. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications, give the video a thumbs up to help me with the YouTube algorithm. And I will see you soon with a new video. Thank you so much for watching.